The recently digitized box of Video 8 tapes yields another little gem. It's the Vicki Lawrence Show from December 10th, 1992, centered around the book Rock Wives by Victoria Balfour. Features Jerry Lee Lewis's child bride Myra, Linda McCartney, I'm not sure who she's married to or, or used to be, and uh, Ingrid Croce, Jim's widow. There are little bits and snippets of this, not in continuous form though, so I, I, I think it's worth posting. <laughs> Today we are going to meet some women with some fascinating stories to tell, including rock and roll star Jerry Lee Lewis's ex-wife, Myra Lewis, and the woman who was married to the late Jim Croce. Ingrid Croce is here. But first I would like to bring out a very special lady. She's a musician, she's author, she's a photographer, she has photographed rock, mu rock music's greatest stars, and she just happened to sneak off with my favorite Beatle, Paul McCartney. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Linda McCartney. <laughs> My heavens, You're, the new book is great. I had the best time looking at that thing. Thank you. Lots of memories, yes? Yeah. Boy, you have hung out with everybody, haven't you? Well, I photographed everybody. Hung out with them, too. It's true. Well, you kind of have to hang out with them to photograph them in a toilet and things, and you've got some... <laughs> Interesting photographs in there. Yeah. I want to backtrack to how in the world you got into photography, but it was kind of an interesting, well, it uh, is. silly story. I worked at Town & Country Magazine at a real flunky job, really, like receptionist, but worse. And I opened all the, the mail and gave it to the different editors. And one day, an invitation came, meet the Rolling Stones on a yacht. So I went, stuck no it in my me. drawer, forget it. I thought they won't want to go. Yeah. So they found the invitation. They said, actually, we don't want to go. You go. So I went down to this boat basin, and there were millions of journalists, photographers, everything. And I had my camera around my neck, and I was total, and still am in a funny way, an amateur photography. I, I like taking pictures, but I don't know much about the mechanics. So somebody came up to me and said, we don't have room for all the journalists and the photographers. You will be the photographer. And I didn't say anything, and I just went on. Took lots of pictures. Fingers crossed they turned out, which they did. And then when I got off the boat, all the journalists said, well, we need photographs to go with our story. So I said, there here they are. are. And a lot of them liked the photographs so much, they kept giving me work. Right. So now you were, this is, your, you're now a single mother. Right. Living in New York. A little girl, yeah. You never studied photography. No. Nope. All of a sudden, you are a photographer to the well, biggest I, rock musicians in the world. Well, what happened was I was inspired to be a photographer through the great early American photographers like Walker Evans and Dorothea Lange and some of the French photographers, Cartier-Bresson. So I was inspired by the art of photography. So I was taking pictures in an artistic way. I never thought I'd make a living uh -huh. from it. So yeah, there I was. I quit my job, much to my father's chagrin. And Your receptionist job? Oh, get over it, Dad. $65 a week, Dad. Really, get you know. over it, Dad. <laughs> I say, hey, Dad, I'm making more money as a photographer than I am at the magazine, so. Now, of all the people that you, sh that you shot, who did you really actually hang out with? Um, most of the people in the book, because I lived in New York, and most of the groups came from England or L.A. or San Francisco or something, so we became friendly, and they said, well, Jim where Morrison? We? Jim Morrison. Were you friends with him? Very good friends, yeah. Was very like? artistic, very poetic, deep person. Not like you'd think he was. Jimi Hendrix? My favorite guitar player of all time. Yeah. Uh, no, again, it's very sensitive. You keep hearing now that they're dead, all these images of these freaky, th you know, they were more poets, I think. You found them to be sort of down to earth? Down to earth and, and very deep people and very good friends. Yeah. Are you still friends with any of them? Yeah, most Who of the living Who do you all hang ones. out with? Who do you hang out with? Us guys, me and Paul, you mean? Yeah. Well, who do we hang out with? Um, 
all different people from everywhere. We have a lot of friends. Not like that many not in show business, but musicians and so on. Are musicians different than people in show business, do you think? No, I think, I think if people are nice and kind, it doesn't matter what they do. Do you? Because, no, I'm just thinking, generally speaking, I find musicians are sort of more almost introverted and shy and almost more down to earth than actors who are sometimes mm. sort of out there, whoop, 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 you know? <laughs> whoop, well, whoop, actors do that again, are, Vicky. Whoop, 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 they like are, it. they like are. <laughs> yeah, so, I think you're right. They're not quite a, you know, I think actors are hams. Even though I'm vegetarian, I use the word ham. <laughs> well, you can use it in reference to the actors, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now here you, okay, you're a single mom, you're in New York, you're all of a sudden, you've launched this uh, photography career. And you right. never studied photography. Nope. I'm glad to hear that because I love to do amateur photography. I'm my kid's favorite I love photographer. It. If, I don't use a flash. I don't have a light meter. I don't have a studio. I never had an assistant, but I love taking pictures. And you always shoot in black and white? Always. Well, a little color. Yeah. And these days, it's a bit better, the color. So how do you get to the Beatles? How did you get there? Well, I, after a while, people started saying, we're doing this, we're doing that. And a, a fellow came to me and said he's doing a book on um, music, and would I take the pictures? So I traveled around and I, we went to England and I wanted to photograph Stevie Winwood and the Beatles. So I took my portfolio to Brian Epstein's office and left it there a few days and went back to pick it up. And they said, oh, he really likes your pictures. Yes, you may photograph the Beatles and he'd like to buy two of your photographs. One of Keith Moon and one of Brian Jones. I said, he can have the photographs, you know. So it was around the time of Sergeant Pepper Yes. There you go. I know. I wore, my, I wore my Memorial Sergeant Pepper suit today, sort of. Yeah, I saw that. You're kind of more in your Abbey Road stuff. I'm kind of more in my... <laughs> yeah. So, um, it was, they were taking pictures of the Beatles, lots, again, journalists and photographers. And by then, I mainly took photographs on my own, not with other photographers, but there were lots there at Brian's house. And they were all standing there in front of his mantelpiece. Now, wait. How old were you? And when was this? Early 20s, 60... Seven, eight. So they were well established. Were you more all more than the other people in my book? They were more established. And they did you have there. preconceived notions about any of the Beatles? Like, did you have a crush on anyone? Like every one of I us. I didn't have a crush on any of them, but the music, like everyone, I loved. And I thought John Lennon was incredible. You know, I thought John Lennon. You know, he's got to be self-assured and very bright, and like the way he sort of he was very upfront. Mm -hmm. Of course, when I met him, he wasn't that upfront. He was quite shy and. Insecure, you wouldn't have thought. Really? I guess I think everything they went through had taken its toll on him. You know, it was quite crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, was it like instant sparks when you and Paul did your eyes meet Actually, across the crowd? Actually, funnily room? enough, I met Paul a few nights before at a club. So I had I actually didn't meet him at this photo session. Yeah. I went to I had I photographed a group called the Animals a lot in New York. So when I came to England, they said, "Well, look, we'll take you out." So I went down to see somebody named Georgie Fame. Do you know him in the Blue Flames? Really sitting in the park and a few other songs. Come on, Vicky, you must No, know. I don't remember that. Anyway, we went down to a club. He was very so good, very it, good, very good guy. Anyway, and we, I went down with the animals and we were listening. The music was great. And in walks Paul and some other friends. And he sat at a table. We were sitting here by the band and there was somebody else. And, then, and our eyes sort of met and, you know, it was that kind of thing. There were sparks? There were definite sparks. So what happened? What happened? So when the band finished, we all got up to leave, and sort of they got up to leave, and everybody started talking, and he, he and I started talking. And he said, well, we're going on to another club now. Do you want to come? I went, why not? So that's how we met. Yeah. At a club. Well, but he then what? He picked me up, literally. Yeah, so he picked <laughs> you up. And, and then what? Um, we I mean, went... how, you know, you're visiting Europe now, so, but you live in America. You didn't up in No, no. To... So then I, I, um, we went to this club. We heard Whiter Shade of Pale. You know, I that remember one? that for one, the yeah. first time. And everybody <laughs> said, "Who is this? What is this?" And then I went back to New York, kept taking pictures, and it just, I guess, it was months. And then um, I was over taking pictures of Jimi Hendrix one evening, came back, and I happened to have one of those great New York answer phones where it's not, they have machines now, tapes, but then people used to take your calls for you. And, and it was yes. great, and then you'd ring in and they'd say, well, Linda, so-and-so called and so-and-so called, and we got quite friendly. Well, Paul McCartney rang while you were out, and I went, Ugh. Anyway. I'll bet the answering service had a heart they attack. Like oh, yeah, yeah Paul McCartney, like yeah, right. I said, oh, sure, shit. I'll tell her you called. <laughs> this is Winston Churchill, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah. we had a little laugh about that. Uh -huh. Anyway, it turns out he had come here to L.A. and he, you know, wanted to say hi while he was in New York. So we met up again. And then 
He went back to England. I stayed here. And then we met again after that. We kept meeting at places. And then one day he rang up and he said, why don't you come to England? <gasps> So that I said, well, like, actually, that I'm not so sure serious. I want to come to England. I have a daughter I'm about to put in school, and, you know, I wasn't so sure. So I debated it for a while, and then I went. Five or ten minutes and said, okay. No, okay, so this was like a big move, and this was really the beginning of these serious stuff here. So we'll take a little break. And would you believe that Linda actually had second thoughts about marrying Paul McCartney? We're going to find out why when we come back. Okay. <laughs> And we're chatting with Linda McCarty, she, McCartney. She's an incredible photographer, musician, mother, Ooh. married to what's his face. <laughs> anyway, um, we're, we uh, so now we're we're in, so you go to England, right? And and what? Cohabitate? Um, I did debate cohabitate. Well, we just got on fine, and we decided this was it. So then we came back, and I introduced him to my father. How did that go? Um, mm. My father's a pretty, you know, uh, serious dude, mm -hmm. but uh, they got on fine. Yeah. And we never looked back from that. Oh. So you decided to get married? Well, actually, we were down in the village one day, and we went past a place, I think it said Buddhist marriages or something, and Paul said, come on, let's go do it. I said, no, actually, I, I had been married before, mm -hmm. and I was a single parent, and I had no interest in getting married again. So I said, no, thanks. Simple as that. So we kept dating and everything, and after a while, I gave in. But but the night before you were going to get married, you guys had a fight, or was it the day of? We didn't really have a fight. It was just sort of, a, I think it was that unsure commitment from me, you know, do I really want to go do this again? Yeah. You know? Now, then all of I a like my freedom. All of a sudden, yeah, but all of a sudden, you're Mrs. Oh, Paul McCartney. I had no How? idea it was going to be like that. How hard was that? For me, hard, because I'm, I'm sort of a voyeur in the, in the nicest sense. You know, I like looking at things. I don't like being looked at that much. So, oh, it was weird, if you want to know the truth. And but dealing with the press, how did you do that? I didn't. <laughs> Couldn't you tell by what you read about me that yeah. I didn't deal with And you had girls breaking into your, where did they break yeah. into your house? Well, where we you went on live? holiday and they stole all my color photographs and things like that, which was not wonderful. But after a while, you get used to it, and I realized because I wasn't a showbiz person, I had to look at it and accept it and be warm about it. But so it's since hard. then, it's, well, now it's easier. I mean, I totally relate to your relationship. I mean, I'm not totally, because Paul McCartney's like, you know, huge and I'm minuscule, but... Well, I don't know but, who you are. you know, for, for, to keep a, a marriage together, and, and Al and I have done it for 18 years now, so we're catching oh. you. Yeah, you're getting well, there. Sort of. I wonder if you'll pass it. <laughs> Probably won't ever pass you, but we're, we're catching. But it's, it's hard that the other person has to really... You know, like I go into a... a we go check into a hotel and people will ask Al, what are you, who are you? Oh, I know. You well, know? see, I didn't I, mind I always that. say he's my love broker. I like it. <laughs> love broker. Good, good. <laughs> but I didn't mind that. People say, oh, don't you hate holding on to his arm? No, that's fine. I, I never wanted to be um, anything other than a happy person. Really? But ha now, how do you figure you've kept it together for, t is it 23 years? 23 years. 23 years. Ooh. I That's, couldn't believe wow, it. Wow, silver anniversary soon, my God. I it's know. only for parents, isn't it? And grandparents? <laughs> really? Really? Oh how have you done it? What do you think is the secret? Um, sense of humor. And I think compromising a bit. You have to realize each person, you know, needs a bit of space. And I think encouragement, probably love helps. Do you think, do you think friendship? I think friendship friendships helps really a lot. Because love sort of yeah. comes and goes. Well, know? I think of love as friendship, but you're right. 
friendship. Yeah. That's the most important. I think if you're good friends, that's what it's about. Do you think him having you be in the band and having you on tour with him and... I mean, you guys literally are together all the time. All the time. I think it helps, too, because we stay in tune that way, I think. I mean, I'm happy not to be there all the time, but we seem to want to be together. But he likes having you there. He does. Now, let's talk about the kids. How many kids now? Four. Four and kids. you got two. I've got two. Your youngest is a same age as teenager. yours. Teenager. Teenager. How, and you are strict vegetarians. Well, I love animals, and I don't think we should eat them. I'm not strict. I just think we should eat the grain direct rather than via a dead animal. Right. No, I understand that. But how do you mm. explain that to a little kid who hates lima beans? Well, I don't think lima beans are that great myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love lima beans. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I do. No, I think people think vegetarian food is bland and boring. Well, I, all I do is make great... I love cooking. You know, I find it very sensual, but I don't like handling flesh, so I don't right. do meat. So I just make great, tasty food. And I said to the kids... In fact, we said to the kids, because really what happened was we were up on our farm in Scotland. Um, we were eating leg of lamb, admiring our sheep in the field, and Paul went... We're eating one of their legs. We're eating binky. We're eating binky <laughs> for dinner. <laughs> and we thought... What are we doing? So we stopped eating now, meat. Now, when was this? This was early Over on? Over 20 years ago. And then we were behind a truck packed with beautiful chickens, and it turned into a chicken processing plant. And we said, they're going to be dead in a minute. Yeah. We're not eating chicken. And then everybody says, oh, fish have no feelings. Well, we drowned them in the air, and they're gasping for breath, but they have no feelings. Hey, thanks for drowning me. Thanks for letting me die. So we decided we're not eating anything that's like us, because so we are you're, animals. you're back to the lima beans. I'm back to the, No, but this cookbook is, is really for meat eaters who don't particularly want to eat meat, but they love food. How did and the it's how easy. Did the, how did the kids adapt to all this when they were young? Well, we just said, look, we're not going to eat meat. I said, I'm not going to cook it. If you want it, you cook it. You can have it. But they love animals, too. And they said, no way. We don't want it. So everybody's still a vegetarian? Because oh, your kids are growing Most of them are growing, growing up. up. Yeah, my youngest is 15, like yours. What did you feed them when they were babies? Great food. Just no meat. Oh, so much. But, like, know. what do you do to it that the kids love? It takes... Well, like, I, the green beans, okay? Is that a good one? What do you do well, to I, green beans? Well, it's not beans just vegetables. It? There's pastas, there's... What is pasta. this? That's what I call festive roast, and it's in place of that poor old turkey that gets to die every Thanksgiving and every Christmas. Now, what do you put in a festive roast? It's mainly it? soya. That's meatless love. <laughs> It's soya and wheat protein, and it's textured, so it chews like meat. Uh huh. But it's not meat. It has no gristle. There you go. You don't have to eat a breast or a thigh or a rib. And it's great, and it's stuffing, and it's gravy, and it slices like turkey, and it's healthy. Yeah. So you, you eat great, you know. You raise the kids with no help, no... I mean, really a low-profile... Low-budget. ...lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that. I like... Simplicity and I like closeness. I like warmth and. But two bedrooms? Well, that was. I happened to fall in love with a little 1930s roundhouse. It looked like a little lantern and it was so beautiful that that's where we lived. Had three of the girls next to us and you'd bang your head on these little dormer things. And after a while, Paul said, No, we gotta get something a bit bigger. So you got something a little bit bigger. So we just moved up the road a bit. It's still oh. not that big, actually. But you're, is this because you wanted them to be perfectly normal? Um, really because I don't like big houses where if you have an argument, the kids are over there or you're there and everybody's sort of rambling around. I like being close. Has I, that been good? I mean, because everybody knows so. everything that's going on with everybody when exactly. you're close, don't they? They sure do. And you, that's, I like that. that's been good, yeah? Simplicity, yeah. Public Honestly, schools? Public schools. I went to one. Did you go to one? Pu well, yeah, but they were good then, Linda. Well, you in know, truth, I'm so concerned England, about them now. No, it's true. It's changed a lot. But it's in horrible. England... We were living in London, and the schools were getting pretty bad. And we moved to the country, and the, the local schools were so nice. I mean, why not? Also, our kids are really nice people, and I think it's important that people should get along with each other and not be privileged. So, I mean, we, are, we want our kids at least to have what everybody else has, which is normality. And I think they've really benefited from it. I didn't want them to go, oh, I don't want Good that. Well, I, I met your that. daughter, and she's absolutely a doll. Yeah, she's, a, she's got a big heart, and yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a little break, and when we come back, we'll talk more. A little with, break. A little break. We'll talk more with Linda McCartney, and we'll meet former wives of singers Jerry Lee Lewis and Jim Croce. We'll be back in a minute. All right.
Vicky, they're the top teen stars of today, and they're driving your kids wild. Do you all have girlfriends? I'm single right now. I don't even care. <laughs> Meet stars from Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Blossom, Life Goes On, Step by Step, and Saved by the Bell. What do you look for in a girl? A guy likes a girl who's a little mysterious too, you know. They're all the craze in the nineties. Tell us about the juicy tan letter she got. Only on the next Vicky. <laughs> now yeah do they understand when people like mine and your age go berserk over dad yeah i think so because they love the music too do they yeah do they have favorite beatles songs do you have a favorite yeah. beatles song um i love them all let me think i uh, finally some of mine are obscure ones like baby you're a rich man does anybody know that oh one? yeah Probably, you know? yes, yes. Um, there's not an obscure Beatles song. Is that, there such a did thing? Did you know that one? Yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Oh, I love them all. I love them all. Yeah, good music. You guys are going on tour again. Yeah. What is that like? Well, we have such a good band right now. We've just got a new drummer who's so good. It, it's fun now. It's great. I mean, Paul is such a great performer. It would be terrible not to do it. Or as they say in England, rude not to. <laughs> and now what exactly do you do? What is your job? Um, cooking. <laughs> no, no, but um, you go on stage. Yeah, I, I do a bit of keyboard, a few harmonies, a bit of that. Do you love it? I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. I, you know, I'm not a natural, I don't think, like he is, but I do, you know, I like it. But he likes to have you there, yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, we're such good friends. We might as well be together. Yeah. And the, now, are you touring around with the book now? Yeah. It's just out. Yeah, and we just finished a new album, which is coming out. So that's really why we're going on tour. Which will be called what? Off the Ground is off what it's called. The off ground. the Ground, like who, all of us. Who had a question? Yes, yeah, stand up. Linda, um, I think being married to Paul McCartney, wow, what an artist and what an ego, perhaps. <laughs> um, you're an artist, too. How does that fit in? And does he support you in what you do? Yeah, he does. And I haven't got a big ego, so I'm all right, you know. <laughs> You don't it's have a big. You don't have a big ego at all. No, I've really lost my ego a few years ago. I mean that really. I think life isn't about egos. It's about living and kindness and you know just experiencing things. Is it because you had to? Because to no, be... I think I just grew, and the more I think I became more spiritual. I think going vegetarian makes you more spiritual. Oh, more... stop! It. I have to. <laughs> we need to stop it. If I start eating my lima beans, I won't care what Forget anybody thinks about beans. me anymore at all. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? I became more spiritual, really, and I, you know, I sort of... From the lima beans? From the lima beans. Yeah? And the corn. It's a religious movement, kids. Yeah, stand up. What is your question? Hi. Um, whatever happened to Susie and the Red Stripes? Well, oh, I like it. Um, <laughs> who, who's Susie I love and the Red reggae. Stripes? You don't even know about Susie, do you? I don't you? know Susie and the Red Stripes. Oh, I'm so stupid. Well, I wrote... I, I was so inspired by Jamaican reggae music, I started writing reggae songs, and... When we were in Jamaica, people used to call me, hey, Susie. You know, I guess blonde, they just call me Susie. I don't know why. <laughs> and Red Stripe beer, so I thought Susie and the Red Stripes. So I made a record, but it just got so hectic. And again, I thought, what am I going to do? Be Susie and the Red Stripes? No. When so I just this? stopped doing it. I'd made a record. Actually, when? we made an uh, animated film to it. Called, the song was called Seaside Woman. And this really great You know great the song, animated, the lyrics, and everything? He knows more than you know, Vicky. Look out. Anyway, make a long story short, long story, very short, um, we did an animated film to the music and it won at Cannes Film Festival. So really? That was something, yeah. When did you do this? That when? It was in the 70s, wasn't it? 70s. Yeah. 77. He knows the oh, year, he knows go. the lyrics. Did you have a question? Yeah. I was wondering, besides Paul McCartney and John Lennon, who are your favorite songwriters? Um, well, I love Otis Redding and I love Neil Young a lot. I think he's really great. There's so many. You know. is, it, is it true what we hear all the time that John was sort of the intellectual one and Not Paul true. was sort of the... They're both very similar and very... The same. I think it's because Paul, everybody thought, oh, he's the cute one. So that sort of hindered 
You Everybody's can't be saying cute he was the deep brain. one. Believe me, he's very artistic and very deep. Oh, he's incredibly artistic. Exactly. I just wondered if but that John, bugged, John if it bugged you at all to hear that. John wrote a lot of beautiful music as well as Rough Edge, and Paul wrote a lot of Rough Edge as well as beautiful. They do were you, partners. Do you all keep in touch with each other, the, the yeah. Beatles? Yeah. Very much so. More now than ever, I think. You suppose they'll ever get together again? Well, how can they if John's not around? It's not the same. But I actually, I, I heard a rumor just the other day that the three of them were going to get together for Clinton's inauguration. Did you hear this? Yeah. Well, I voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of, they're working together on the whole sort of history of the Beatles, and they have talked about maybe doing some more music together, which That's would be great. That's nice because there really. was a time there where they really sort of burned yeah. out on each other, didn't they? And well, I think they've been together so long, and they've grown up, and uh, and again, a lot of whispering in ears against each other. I think it's you know, it's life, isn't it? It's hard life in the past. Yeah. yeah, stand up. What is your question? Yeah, I'd like to know, Linda, if you keep in touch with Yoko Ono at all. Not really, no. I'm, I keep more in touch with Barbara and Olivia, I think, probably because we have a bit more in common. You know, but, you know, we, we, Yoko and I, we sort of send Christmas cards and stuff, but I think living in England and her living over here, we don't really. Very politically correct answer, I have a feeling. <laughs> now, listen. Thank you. I, <laughs> I know you must scoot because you have a, a book opening uh, tonight at a gallery. Tonight, as up we the road. speak, it's happening yeah. as we speak. Exactly. In fact, it's on now. I'm sitting I here know and there so all over there. I know it is. So you need to scoot. I'm going to come down and get a hug, and I hope I'm going to get over there too. Thank Good. you so much for coming oh, and visiting. I'm really happy us. to be here. Linda Great McCartney. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to push the bed to you, please. Oh no. You I, might do. Maybe you can talk me into it. Kids, what does it take to be the wife of a rock star? We'll find out from the women who inspired some of rock's greatest hits when we come back. Say, do you have some funny or goofy home videos that you would like to share? Well, we're having our very own Vicky's Wackiest Home Video Contest. So send us your tape and you may get a chance to put your family or friends in the spotlight and even be a guest on the show. And make yourself a copy first because all those tapes are non-returnable. with wives of rock stars. Well, I guess I should say former. Ex huh? Well, I don't know what I should say. <laughs> My next guests were married to two men who made indelible marks in the history of rock and roll. Please welcome Myra Lewis. She's the ex-wife of Jerry Lee. Great balls of fire, Lewis. And Ingrid Croce, the widow of Jim Croce, who gave us Bad Bad Leroy Brown and Time in a Bottle and whose wife was <laughs> early on. We should talk about how you met your husbands, yes? Okay. I would like to go for it. I mean, <laughs> you're, Myra, no, we were talking in the break. Your, yeah. your story almost has to seem like another person, another lifetime. It was. It I mean, was. you were, what, 12 when you met, met him? I met Jerry when I was 12, and, and I married him when I was 13 years old. And see, like, who's even coherent when they're 13, <laughs> you know? I wasn't. Like Carol says, you're teenagers, and you have to treat them like outpatients. I should have been put in something. <laughs> no, no, take us back. What happened? Well, it was 1957, and Jerry took a friend of his to the courthouse who signed my name to a marriage license application. I wasn't but, but, old enough. But wait, did he ask you to marry him? I mean, did he No. He didn't ask you? No. He came home and gave me this piece of paper and said, we're getting married. And I looked at it, and my first thought was, this is a joke. This is funny. And he said, no, Myra, I'm serious. I love you, and I want to marry you. And I said, Jerry, are you crazy? My daddy will kill you. And he said, <laughs> he said no, he won't. Your daddy likes me. We're in business together. My daddy played in the band with you. Your daddy? You just said yeah, we saw daddy's your daddy's arm, arm in right. the background on the guitar. Arm. Right. And uh, he said, no, your daddy likes me. It'll be fine. And I said, no, it won't. I said, Jerry, I'm too young. And he said, your mother married young, and my mother married young. It'll be OK. And finally, after arguing with him, I realized that he was the man offering me everything I had ever wanted. For as a 13-year-old child, my aspirations 
Yeah, I'm voting, putting her in shock. <laughs> I did not want a career. I did not want to go to school. I wanted a husband, a home. What grade were you in? The eighth grade. <laughs> I wanted to be Betty Crocker. <laughs> that would be Betty Crocker Lewis. <laughs> I'm afraid so. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, I said yes. And the next day, I stood in front of this North Mississippi minister and said, I do, with the clear, cunning logic of a child. I made a decision I've had to explain and defend from that day to this. Is that legal? No. <laughs> no. Who gave you away? Nobody. 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 Okay. How did you two meet? How did you and Jim meet, Ingrid? It was a December snowy night in Philadelphia, and I had um, started to sing some folk music with a couple of musicians out at a college nearby. I was 15 years old. And um, not another too much older. Here. This is another and, lifetime, too. Isn't many it? lifetimes, it seems. And, and um, I really didn't know much about folk music, but they convinced me that I should do it. And I grew my hair long and got myself ready to, to look right for a hoot nanny. And, and we went out and we, we performed at this radio station. And um, I walked into the radio station, and behind the uh, control booth, I saw this young man who whose eyes and my, my eyes and his eyes met, and that was it. And um, he said, you know, we're ready to perform. We did, our, we did our little act. And he walked back out of the control room and tripped over about four <laughs> wires and finally managed to come up and say, you know, I like your voice, and I think you should sing rock and roll. And that was the way we began our, our relationship. Now, he was how old then? He was 19. Okay, so this is making a little more sense. I kind of deal with we this We were one. children, yes. But you, you were chil but you were children together. Yes. <laughs> you, uh, how old was Jerry when you married him? 21. He was 21. But I was the oldest. <laughs> really. I, I understand that. You understand that? that. Yes. I he was understand. more of a child than I was. Yeah. So you, now, you're, when did you get married? When I was 19. So did you guys date this whole time from 15 to you Yes, we dated, and um, we sang together, and we went on the road together, and made music together, and made love together, did everything together. <laughs> so did you leave school as well to go no, on the road with him? I didn't leave school. So you finished high school? I finished high school, went to college, and Jim supported me all the way through school. And um, just as we were about to finish, I was about to finish college, we got a call from an old friend of Jim's who said, come up, we've got a record deal for you on Capitol Records, and we want to do an album. And so we said, well, Ing, do you want to finish school? And I said, well, you know, we won't get another opportunity like this very often, so let's go. And we were packed and up in New York City in 24 hours, and we did our album and came out Ingrid and Jim Croce. First album. Well, we'll, we'll if this will take us to a break, and we'll find out more to come when we come back. Myra and Ingra, uh, we'll talk to them more. And we're also going to meet a woman who has written a book. Uh, she knows all about this, being married <laughs> to a rock star, because she's, she's written the book on it. We'll be back in a minute. Got a video camera or you know somebody who does well turn that camera on yourself and tape your thoughts or ideas in 30 seconds or less and we may even play your tape on the air send it to us at 3000 west alameda avenue room 2977 burbank california 91523 <laughs> Ingrid Croce, two of the women that most of us wanted to trade places with when we were kids. They were the wives of <laughs> rock stars Jerry Lee Lewis and Jim Croce. And joining us now is the author of Rock Wives, Victoria Balfour. Welcome. <laughs> I suppose we should clarify that you're not a rock wife. Absolutely not. <laughs> did you ever want to be? Oh, sure. sure I was in love with um, uh, Paul McCartney's first girlfriend, Jane Asher, who... Um, Yes, I wanted, I was very jealous of her, very angry. And, and Jane Asher was one woman who refused to be a rock wife. I mean, Linda was very attracted to that world. And Jane Asher um, went on to have her own acting career and is married to political cartoonists, has never done an interview about the Beatles at all, ever. 
Do you find, you interviewed 72 rock wives, do you find that there are similarities that, that, that they all have? Um, I think I can generalize a little bit. I, I mean, these two ladies are so different. Their um, stories are so completely different. Well, you know, Myra comes from a different era, or, um, you know, mid-50s. I mean, Jerry Lee, that was when he peaked. So rock and roll was really young, and, and Ingrid was the 60s. I do notice, um, we can't generalize about all of them, but about a number of them, the women that marry rock stars seem to be either anchors for the men, you know, don't do drugs, or always there for the man when they come home from the road, or they take a nosedive with the man take drugs, become alcoholics, and a lot of these women have um, careers of themselves. Uh, some of them are Vogue models. A, a lot woman. of them are Vogue models A lot models of them are Vogue models, lately. but there are some women <laughs> with the Rolling Stones who've been replaced. There was a woman called Anita Palmberg. Some of you in the audience may know of her, who was with Brian Jones and then had two uh, children by Keith Richards. She was in movies, uh, was in Vogue, and had a big career of her own, and both Brian and Keith told her they didn't want her to work, you know, tore up her movie scripts. She became a heroin addict with Keith. Uh, by the time she was 40, she looked like she was about 60. This happens to women, some women in the rock world. Yeah. D uh, Ingrid, take us back to, when did Jim uh, die in the plane crash? In, um, on September 20th, 1973, 20 years ago. Gosh, I can't believe it's been that 20 long. 20 years ago, I yes. I can't Almost. believe it. Now, where were you in the career at that point? Where was he? You were no longer singing with him. I had, we had a two-year-old son who was about to turn two that week. And, um, and Jim had at least three number one songs and had his, he had just finished doing his third album. And it was just about to come out when he when he was killed in a plane crash. Were you happy at that point, or was he? Because didn't I read that um, he the, the the year that he passed away was on the road 360 days? Yes, um, it was a very tough time, Jim. You know that people say you become famous overnight, but it was a 10-year struggle. We met in 19, I guess 62, and and it was a little <coughs> more than almost 11 years that he had worked really hard and had very little to show for it. And, and even at the end, there were no finances involved. He was, you know, you always want to know that, that there's a value to what you do. And he still had not received any royalties. So well, You had to fight for his royalties, yeah? Well, yeah, about 12 years of it. Yeah. yeah. So. And the thing I couldn't believe was that nobody called you when he passed away. Well, you heard it from a friend? or Actually, um, I got a call from my stepmother, and she had just watched it on the Today Show. And nobody bothered to call. Why? Well, I guess um, it was pretty. It was a pretty difficult thing, I guess, for some people to to deal with. And and really, um, it was a very different world back then. You know, I, as I read uh, Victoria's book last night, I realized that there was a pretty chauvinistic world going on out there yeah. then, and women weren't considered part of that. We have to take a break, but mm -hmm. we will talk more with the Rock Wives when we return. Hottest young TV stars discuss their life on camera and off, including Chris Burke from Life Goes On, Mario Lopez from Saved by the Bell, and Joey Lawrence from Blossom on the next Vicky. and downs of being married to a rock star and uh, our guests are Myra Lewis, Ingrid Croce and, and writer Victoria Balfour. Myra, I've got to talk to you now about <laughs> what, first of all, what was he thinking when he married a 13 year old? Well, who knows what he was thinking? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know but what I was thinking. <laughs> you went off to England with him on tour? Right. Um, we were married in December of 57 and May of 1958 there was a major tour booked in England and Jerry's managers advised him not to take Myra, and he said either she goes or I don't go. And we arrived in London, and the next day the news media took over, and the front page headline was, Entertainer Jerry Lee Lewis is here with his 13-year-old child bride, Myra. And then the next day, it was Jerry Lee Lewis is here with his child bride, Myra, who is his second cousin. And on the third day, the headlines read, Clear out this gang. Have you ever been thrown out of a country? 
No. We were thrown out of England. <laughs> no. We were thrown out of England. But it was okay because we thought, oh, we can't wait to get home to America where they will welcome us with open arms. But it wasn't that way because here they were embarrassed and the opponents of rock and roll said, see, see what it does? It makes men marry young girls. <laughs> and, and Jerry's career went straight down. It, we just really dove, didn't it? Like in oh, five oh, days. It was over. It was over. It was over. We limped out of London. A six weeks tour had gone bad in five days. And Jerry went from being a major star to being a has-been. But that wasn't the end of you guys. You no, were married that was, for, how many years were you married to him? 13 years. The next 10 years were the suffering years for Jerry's career, but those were the best 10 years of our marriage. Because we were like two people that had a common enemy, and we were going to fight the world off and survive this. So and it went, when did it go bad? When his career took back off and got good. Why? Because, I mean, I would think if a, I, if a guy was really unhappy that he, that he might take it out on you during those well, 10 years. Well, I think what happened to me, Myra, what happened, I answered them, I don't really know. Maybe you grew up. Well, I think <laughs> that, Maybe yeah, that he happened grew along up? the way. I don't know. We have to take a that break. We'll try and figure it out when we come back. <laughs> flown by and I did want everybody to know that you, you all are happy and wonderful today. Well, how, what, tell us we about survive. your life now, Myra. I'm with Century 21 Richard Williams in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a million dollar producer in real estate. I've been in real estate for 12 years. I do public speaking. I'm so happy. My life is so wonderful now. Are you married? Oh, yes. Happily so? Yes, to Richard Williams. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, I'm Ingrid? married to the boss. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm also married. I'm married to Jim Rock and we work together at a Croce empire that's on the corner of 5th and F in San Diego. We have restaurants and we have music and my, our son, A.J. Croce, is um, now going to be doing his own album. It'll be out what in April. What do you April. think of that? I think it's wonderful. <laughs> He's great. He's great. What is his name? A.J. A.J. Croce. A.J. Croce. Rhythm well. and blues. And Victoria, you're going to have to come back and do this with us again. Yeah, there, you can be my resident expert. There's no shortage of women to talk about, believe me. We just scratched <laughs> the surface. I, can, I, will, I will look forward to it next time. Thank okay. you all. And uh, I, w I would like to thank KBOA in Tucson, Arizona, WDEF in Chattanooga, Tennessee, for helping us to make this happen. You all have a wonderful day. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Accommodations furnished by the Sheraton Universal Hotel, official hotel of Universal Studios Hollywood. It's the hotel of the stars, and so close to the action, you'll feel like a star yourself. BLS Limousines, serving Los Angeles and New York for over 14 years, can provide sedans and limousines for every special event. BLS Limousine, cars to the stars. Thank you, I'm Magnus. If you like what I'm wearing, kids, go get it there. Thanks for watching Cleveland Live Music. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe icon. Or watch the next video that YouTube tells you you'll like that I've uploaded. I think we can accommodate you. All. All of you. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on.